the top contributor of, of GeoServer and also the top contributor of uh, GeoTools. Uh, and he won the, also the Soul Cuts Award in 2017 in, in Boston. I think most people in OSGeo uh, already know Andrea very well. Uh, so I give the floor to you, Andrea, to tell us about uh, GeoServer and OGC APIs. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we, we can hear you perfectly. See my screen? So, uh, uh, yes, we, we can see your screen. Awesome. So yeah, my name is Andrea. Tonight I'm going to talk to you about uh, OGC APIs implementation in GeoServer. Uh, so first of all, uh, um, whoops, what's going on here? There. Um, so first of all, uh, uh, just a, a word about my company, GeoSolutions has offices in Italy and the United States. Uh, we are a, um, oh my, <laughs> I hope this is not going to happen often. <laughs> I have some USB thing going on and on. Okay, I unplugged a few bits. Can you still hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Uh, the The screen was kind of switching between. Uh, right. The... But now it's it's stable. Yeah, it seems I just to be stable. Pulled yes. some stuff from the USB. <laughs> Hopefully, it's gonna be st staying quiet now. Okay, so back it seems to stable. solutions. <laughs> back to just solutions. Uh, yeah, it's um. Uh, service company, uh, we have uh, 30 plus collaborators, uh, 25 of which are engineers, so tech, uh, uh, very much tech oriented. We support a geo server, map store, geo node and geo network and provide a number of services, including support, deployment, uh, uh, custom development and professional training. And it seems that I unplugged the one bit too much. Okay. Okay. Right. So we are a strong supporter of open source, and uh, as you may imagine from this uh, presentation, we are actively participating in OGC working groups and test beds and the like. We also support the standards to critical uh, critical to GeoInt. Now, a bit of history about the OGC APIs implementation in GeoServer. Uh, at the beginning, there was WFS3. Uh, it was not called the GC API features. It was 2017, and uh, it was developed in a private repo for uh, for a while. And then uh, one first Big Bang event, uh, the WFS3 hackathon happened, where we, us and other uh, implemented um, uh, WFS3 against our servers and verified uh, uh, whether it was easy or not, and uh, provided feedback. And then a number of events after that, like Testbed 14, the Vector Task Pilot, the API Hackathon, Testbed 15, and going to 2020, various online uh, OGC API sprints. Here is a bit of the story about them. So in um, March 2018, we joined the WFS3 Hackathon, and we did the first implementation of uh, WFS3 in GeoServer in like two, three days. Uh, it was donated to the community as a community module called WFS3. Then we joined the testbed 14. Uh, in particular, uh, we joined the compliance testing thread where a first site test for WFS3 was developed and GeoServer was one of the three implementation that um, successfully passed the site test. Then we also joined the vector tile pilots end of 2018. That was interesting because we started uh, joining the concept of tiling with the concept of OGC API features in, uh, in terms of delivering vector tiles and also publishing uh, styles to clients to render maps client side uh, through a new service called OGC API styles. In 2018, uh, OGC API, sorry, WFS3 was renamed into OGC API features. Uh, and at this API hackathon in London, uh, other services started exploring, implementing OGC APIs as well. 
and uh, a notion of API commons, uh, that is the shared bit between all the APIs was formed and uh, uh, made into its own uh, draft standard. Uh, fast forward to 2020 and 2021, OGC has been uh, um, organizing OGC API virtual code sprints. It's each code sprint that typically has one focus or maybe two or three focuses at, at most, uh, where um, developers implement uh, the last version of uh, one or more specification. We typically choose one when we when we participate. And we use these events to keep uh, GeoServer API, the GeoServer API implementation uh, up to date with the evolving definitions of the various uh, services, because most of them are still in draft. Now, what are the common uh, elements of OGC APIs? Well, they are all based on Open API. Open API is an, an open uh, initiative uh, to uh, that, that provides a, a way to specify the definition of a RESTful service based on resources, representation, HTTP methods. And uh, uh, in addition to that, each uh, OGC API has a, um, a core um, specification, which tends to be very small and can be implemented in, uh, in a matter of days. And then a bunch of in, uh, extensions, which you may or may not implement as you choose, which add extra functionality. Um, the common uh, traits of uh, OGC API are a landing page, which is your entry point into the API, which basically contains links, a conformance class declaration, where you can find what actually is implemented in the server in terms of extensions and um, APIs. And for services that expose data, then you will probably have a collections a resource listing the collections and access to each collection. Um, the API definition is typically linked from the landing page uh, through a, a link uh, with a rail of service dash. Uh, it doesn't have a fixed position in the um, resource tree, although GeoServer typically puts it at uh, slash API. Uh, since we are talking RESTful services, everything is linked. So in pretty much every kind of response you get from an OGC API service, you will get lots of links. So for example, uh, here we have the slash collections, which has a number of backlinks to, to itself and to alternate representations of itself. That is, uh, maybe I'm asking for the JSON representation and then I'm gonna uh, get links to, uh, pointing to the HTML representation or the YAML representation. And, and then to its neighboring resources, in this particular case, links to the uh, child's, the single collections. And at the bottom, you see um, the, the structure of a link. So it has a link, a relationship, a type, which is the MIME type of what you're going to get if you follow it, and a title for, uh, well, for humans to read. Uh, each resource has a representation. Typically, OGC API Commons recommends using HTML for humans and crawlers and JSON for machine-to-machine -machine, uh, communication. How do you choose the representation? Well, the accept header is always there. And it's great for browsers because they always send an accept header. And uh, uh, each server has a choice of a custom query parameter uh, that may be used to, uh, to force a particular representation. In the case of GeoServer, that's F. F equals the MIME type you want. Uh, each API is based on a tiny core, like the bare minimum for a working service and a, a potentially large set of modular extensions for everything else. And you go to the conformance declaration to find out what is implemented in one particular implementation of an OGC API. Everything, um, I mean, not everything, but most of the APIs are still in draft stage and, and changing as we speak, but there are a couple of, uh, of specs which reached uh, a, st a stable version, a 1.0. One is OGC API Features Core, and the other one is OGC API Features Coordinate Reference System by reference. Now, let's have a look at OGC uh, API features. Um, in addition to what you, you can find in OGC API Core, you will get items under each collection. Items are the features, and items slash item ID to refer to a single feature. The only supported CRS are CRS84, 
uh, in long digit latitude order or CRS 84H if you need uh, also an elevation. So that's the only CRS you get out of the box without implementing any extra extensions. The schema is not required. So features can be anything. They can be simple, complex, heterogeneous. You can literally take a Elasticsearch database or a MongoDB with uh, a load of uh, heterogeneous JSON documents, and it's going to be a valid uh, source for NOGC API features, which is something we couldn't have said for WFS. Uh, if you have a schema, you can link it using the described by uh, relationship. We have, of course, an open API definition. And uh, there's a matter of style here. You can uh, follow two approaches to your definition of, uh, of the API by providing uniform collections uh, descriptions. Uh, so you have only one endpoint at collections slash collection ID, where collection ID is a parameter or have one uh, explicit uh, resource for each and every collection. Uniform collections is simpler, scales better to thousands of collections, but has limitations in that you cannot say anything specific or unique to each collection. Every collection has the same set of parameters, the same description when it comes to the API. So it means that the parameters that, uh, that you can use in queries against those collections are always the same. GeoServer currently implements this approach because typically uh, GeoServer deployments tend to be uh, to have a lot of collections. Uh, there's a statistics from a GeoSeer that you can look at. The average GeoServer on the internet has 1,000 layers, give or take. If you go for distinct collections, like this is an example from uh, LD Proxy, uh, then you can have a, a different characteristics for each collection. So it means that for one collection, you might have an extra query parameter that you don't have in others, for example. And it's very suitable for a small number of collections and uh, more flexible, but also verbose. When it comes to accessing the single items, uh, I, the items resource lists the collection, the content of a collection, and it can be a JSON, GeoJSON document or HTML or GML or anything. Because, uh, well, the, the uh, representations that you implement could be pretty much anything. In terms of filtering, you have got a bounding box and daytime, and eventually extra parameters declared in the API document, which, as I said, uh, GSRA does not implement. So this is one example, bounding box, and we have a bounding box, uh, daytime, and we have a, a, a specific time, and uh, building state equals good is the, an example of the hypothetical query parameter unique to that collection. Paging, uh, yeah, OGC API feature core defines a li limit query parameter that you can use to, to page through. And then you have to follow links to get to the next and previous pages. GeoServer implements paging by using a, a, an offset or stat index uh, parameter but it's uh, the GeoServer specific choice. If you wanted to be compliant, then you go and look at the links and you follow them blindly. So each server can do paging using a different uh, way of constructing the, the links. And that's all. That's all you have in OGC API features core. Uh, so what about uh, filtering uh, property selection, reprojection and uh, transactions and so on? Well, those are extensions. So with the coordinate reference systems by reference extension, you can support CRS is other than CRS 84. You can discover in which native CRS the, the data is, and you can uh, reproject the output, and you can also query uh, with a bounding box, which is in a different um, CRS. This is finalized. GeoServer currently implements an older draft, and uh, we are basically missing the, the storage CRS information. So it's, uh, it's not up to date, but uh, uh, pretty close. Filtering. Filtering is currently in, uh, in draft, but as Clemens was saying, uh, getting close to completion. Uh, filtering adds a notion of queryables, which is the set of properties that you can use uh, to build a filter. Filter, filter lang, and filter CRS. Uh, with the notion that you can uh, implement uh, one or more filtering languages in your server. The first draft of the uh, specification used the CQL, the one supported also by GeoServer. 
but public feedback asked for changes and now the second draft is implementing SQL 2 which is similar but not same so GeoServer right now implements a SQL we will have to uh, create a new parser for SQL 2 and implement uh, support for it so here is an example of a, a, a query uh, asking for a, a cloud cover between 0 uh, 10% and 20% and uh, uh, a couple of other properties as SQL 2 text and another example implemented as implementing the same filter but in JSON. So we got these two options, text which is human readable and compact, SQL 2 JSON which is machine processable and well generally fits better inside a larger JSON document. Uh, there is a notion of uh, transactions uh, in draft uh, as Clement said with the post, put, patch, and delete against a single feature. Uh, it's not supported by GeoServer uh, as of now, but uh, it's, uh, it's probably going to be implemented in a future OGC API code sprint. Now let's have a look at uh, uh, the GeoServer HTML representations for the OGC API features, because so far we have just seen um, um, uh, paths, but not nothing visual. So, from the service capabilities that you normally find in your home page, you follow the link from features 1.0 and you get to the landing page. The landing page of uh, OGC API features points to uh, the usual suspects, that is the API definitions, the collection, and the conformance. This is uh, an API, uh, HTML representation of the API, which is, uh, well, dynamically generated uh, from, uh, from the JSON and uh, it's also interactive so you can also click on these uh, paths and try the operations slash collections is uh, implemented as this it lists all the collection and providing title and description contents and so on links to queryable links to data when i follow the queryables i get the list of uh, properties that can be used to build filters in the case of GeoServer, that's all the properties as of now we uh, are probably going to make that configurable in the future. When you follow the links to items, you get a little table uh, providing you all the attributes besides the geometry and the paging at the bottom. Okay, so that was uh, an idea of how uh, the HTML uh, representation can look. Just know that all of these uh, uh, representations are driven by free marker templates, so you can go in change the CSS, change the, uh, the logos, change the contents uh, of, uh, of the pages to suit your particular needs. Now, moving to another API, coverages. Coverages, uh, OGC API coverage is probably the simplest WCS ever. And uh, each collection, as, at least in the GeoServer implementation, is a single coverage. It's the last API we implemented in the last uh, OGC API code sprint, and it's currently incomplete. Anyways, uh, what makes a coverage in uh, OGC API coverages? The domain set, that is the description of the spatial and temporal domain. The range type, that is the data structure, which bands and which types. The range set, the actual pixel values, and the metadata, that is anything else. And if you put them all together, you get the entire coverage. The thing is, in OGC API coverages, you have resources to access each and every one of the single components, or you can access the entire coverage. So if you go for coverage extraction, you can uh, perform a, a, an extraction by bounding box and daytime. You can use bounding box or you can use a, a, um, a domain subsetting. There are basically two different ways of expressing the bounding box. Here, in this case, we, uh, we are accessing one coverage which is a, a satellite image and asking the output in PNG and the providing a particular bounding box. So it's a pretty easy API to use for that. As I said, there are a number of missing bits. Uh, the range set is, um, is missing, so we are not describing the bands and we are not supporting band selection. Uh, scaling is missing and the coverage tiles are missing. We hope to implement those as uh, OGC API coverages coverages starts being used in uh, contracts. Maps. We have uh, also a, a small implementation of the Maps API. 
maps adds uh, on top of collections a notion of a style uh, which is listed as collection metadata and an optional info resource that you can use to do feature info so basically under collections you got styles and for each style you can access map or map info the map resource fetches a map so it's a pretty close equivalent to get map but unlike get map all the parameters are optional so the link that you see there uh, just saying okay give me top states with the style population is working i don't have to specify a bounding box i don't have to specify width and height all is filled in by the server if uh, nothing is provided by the client but the client can provide those if they want to get a more specific answer the info resource is basically adding on top of the map resource an i and a j a position of a pixel that you want to query and you get up, uh, back the, the feature info in that position tiles tiles is interesting tiles uh, like many others is a building block uh, a building block means that uh, it's not defined as a standalone service well you can implement it as a standalone service and a college server does but uh, um, it, you can attach this notion of tiles to basically any resource that can be split into tiles so GServer implements tile data from uh, one collection and tile maps from one collection. Tile data means vector tiles or row coverage tiles, while tile map means uh, a rendered uh, map that is split into tiles. As I said, it's a building block, so you can take anything, a collection, a set of collections, a set of maps, or the output of a WPS process and if that one resource can be sliced into tiles then you can attach the tiles building block to it and uh, serve tiles out of it each uh, tiles resource uh, provides url templates and this is interesting because um uh, well you know that all the resources in in an ogc api are linked to each other but when it comes to tiles we have a practical problem there can be billions of tile resources so we cannot practically linked to them what we have instead is a url template that uh, you need to fill uh, with uh, a z a y and an x in order to uh, to address a particular tile uh, it's also interesting that we have a metadata resource for tiles which can be implemented uh, which describes the the tile set and uh, uh, can it can be implemented as a tile JSON? Tile JSON is an open specification by Mobbox, and by implementing a tile JSON, uh, we allow uh, clients that are used to the Mapbox world to interact with your server directly. So we have made the test with Maputnik, which is an OSM style editor, uh, against tiles served by GeoServer and providing the URL to uh, the tile JSON. It works as long as the GeoServer is under HTTPS, otherwise it doesn't. Okay, uh, enough about tiles, let's talk about styles. Styles is interesting because an API, it's an API without collection, because it's an API without data. It's an API that talks about styles. So GeoServer has always had this internal style catalog where we have all the styles and they can be linked to, to the data. Well, the Styles API exposes this internal catalog, allowing clients to fetch the, the styles and eventually edit them and update them. So this is pretty interesting in terms of delivering raw data because you can fetch raw data either by using OGC API features, coverages, or tiles, and then also fetch the style that, uh, also fetch a style that is suitable for that data and render everything client side. In case of GeoServer, uh, we have a model where uh, we support the multiple style languages. Uh, in case uh, of uh, a style language which is not SLD, we also offer on-the-fly translation to SLD. So uh, each uh, style resource has, well, uh, a bunch of metadata, and then it links to the style sheets. The style sheets can be uh, more than one type so in this case we are linking to a css but also providing a uh, converted on the fly converted version in sld 
We also built a, a Styles API client in, during Testbed 15 as part of Map Store, and part of that effort now lives inside the Map Store Style Editor, and it's also used inside GeoNode. Um, uh, and uh, well, we have the Style Editor that was using the Style API to locate the suitable data for display, allowing the editing of the style and then saving back the results to, to, to GeoServer. Finally, there are more APIs. Uh, I haven't included them uh, in this presentation, but GeoServer also supports the Stack API as a, as a community module. And I talked about it briefly uh, this morning uh, in my Earth Observation presentation. We implement a, a tentative DGGS API for uh, distributed global uh, uh, grids. And uh, um, there are also a number of APIs which GeoServer does not support yet, but that we would like to add either through sponsoring from customers or by participating to OGC API sprints, such as records, processes, routes, and environmental data retrieval. And I think that more will pop up because I, I have a feeling that uh, the, the direction is to go towards uh, smaller API, more specific, and more of them. And that's all. Thank you very much, uh, Andrea. Uh, I think we, we have one question for you. So it says, uh, any suggestions on handling sub-collections hierarchies? Use a thematic server name and now, then leave the sub-collection in the collections URL? Right. So. Yeah, this concept is, is already present in, in WMS. In the WMS capabilities, you can have a three of, three of layers and the layer, uh, con some layers can contain other layers. In OGC APIs, the, the collections are flat, uh, but uh, uh, there has been quite a bit of discussion during test beds about uh, nesting collections. And I think that's going to be a, an extension to OGC API commons that every other API can implement in order to have uh, nested collections uh, and uh, serve data through a, a hierarchical organization. But GeoServer does not implement anything like that at the moment. OK. Uh, so uh, a question that I have. Um, so in the, in the GeoServer roadmap, does it contemplate uh, the support of uh, all these uh, legacy standards like uh, WFS and WMS, uh, not, not only maintaining them, but uh, upgrading them along with the newer standards, OGC APIs, or do you plan at a certain point to switch from from one to the other? Uh, it, uh, one thing that I have to say is that it's not like we plan much because uh, <laughs> the, 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 the GeoServer PSC doesn't have a, a large bag of money to you know drive the development. The, the development is really driven by uh, support and uh, development contracts that companies have with their customers. Anyways, I can give you, so it, it's actually up to them to, to drive uh, GeoServer wherever they, they want to drive it. But I can give you a, a gut feeling impression of mine. Um, right now, um, we are seeing uh, only very few early adopters of uh, the OGC APIs, and they are typically research institutes doing prototypes. Uh, and uh, uh, the other customers are typically returning customers. They are already have a deployment with the classic OGC, API, uh, OGC services, and they are generally satisfied with them. Uh, what I see happening is that uh, eventually we will switch the OGC API modules from community status to official extension. And we will start seeing deployments that have both the old and the new services. And uh, uh, I think that's going to that's gonna stay that way for, uh, for a long time. Uh, because uh, many organizations have trouble switching all their clients that they have and uh, their, uh, their internal developments and, and whatnot. Uh, wholesale to a new API. So I expect that they will migrate slowly and having both the old and the new at the same time deployed in the same server, serving the same data is going to enable mm -hmm. a, 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 prog a progressive uh, upgrade of the infrastructure. But that means that the OGC uh, services, the classic one, will stay there for quite a while. Hey, it's great that uh, GeoServer is supporting that uh, transition. 
it's, it's just it's it's a lot of standards to to support. <laughs> well, actually, uh, from the point point a uh, code base point of view, uh, the all the OGC API implementations are built on top of the classic OGC services. Eventually, we will okay. have to uh, take the engine, uh, detach it from uh, the classic OGC services, and then ha allow people to deploy OGC API features without deploying WFS, which at the moment is not possible. But the direction that I see us going is that one. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Andrea, we have another question. Uh, it's, will the user role management be present for APIs? Yes, it's already present. So when, uh, um, so the user role management is, is already, uh, I mean, it's, it's uh, built in and, and a part of, uh, of GeoServer. And uh, uh, when you uh, define access rules for uh, layers, they apply regardless of how you access those layers. So you, it doesn't matter if you use the OGC services or the OGC APIs, the same rules apply because they are applied at the catalog level. So ma, ma, uh, deep down into GeoServer. And uh, the, the protocols are the, the highest level. So they all share the same security subsystem. And also okay. for service access, uh, the OGC API is already plugged into the, the service security. So you can already say something like, okay, uh, styles, uh, transactional operations, I'm going to allow them only to a particular type of user. Just like we do for uh, WFS transactions. So it can already be done. Perfect. Uh, another question, uh, will the authentication methods will also will be also present. Yeah, exactly the same consideration. Authentication methods are a layer uh, on top of every HTTP request that the GeoServer uh, receives. So uh, they should already be working with OGC APIs, although I haven't tried. OK, so uh, if there are no more questions, uh, I think we reached the time uh, of of our presentation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Andrea, for this fantastic presentation. And also thank you Welcome. to all the other speakers who contributed uh, to this very refreshing uh, session today. And also of the participants uh, that stayed here, especially those in Europe, uh, which uh, have a late, a late time, late night schedule. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the session. I, I certainly did. Uh, I see a lot of clubs. So thank you, everyone, and uh, good uh, afternoon and go good evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye.